Welcome to today's session on Dynamics 365 Basic Configurations. I'm your host, Angelina Jacobs, a consulting manager at CRM Dynamics located in Mississauga, Ontario. As always, feel free to connect on LinkedIn, especially if you want to see any additional Dynamics 365 and Power Platform content. In today's session, we're going to cover how to create and edit tables, formerly known as entities, columns, formerly known as fields, forms, views, which are essentially the list of records, also referred to as rows, and then the revisions required to the apps to make sure that those edits are visible on the user interface. I will no doubt use the terms in parentheses interchangeably with the new terminology from Microsoft. So let's get going. There are a few ways that you can get to the back end area to do your system configurations. And I'm gonna show you a few of those ways. Essentially, you want to get to the Power Apps area. You can do this by going to office.com slash apps. As you see here, I do have Power Apps available to me. You can also go directly to the Power Apps area, which is make.powerapps.com. This is my preference, so I usually bookmark it, as you can see up here. You also can launch this through the app that you are in. So let's say I launched the Sales Hub app. From here, if you go to the top right gearbox and hit Advanced Settings, For those familiar with older versions of Dynamics, you might recognize the classic version here. Drop down your settings menu, customizations, and you can essentially launch whichever solution you'd like. I'm gonna use customize the system, which puts me into the default solution. And it should give me a yellow bar across the top suggesting to try the new experience. So you can also then hit this and that will open up the Power Apps area. Note that because I launched it from the default solution, it's automatically putting me into the default solution area within Power Apps. You can always go back through your breadcrumb trail to solutions. I'm going to exit these tabs. I'll keep my Sales Hub app open for now, and I'll go back to my Power Apps tab I had opened previously. Once in here, always double check which environment you're in. Top right here, this will list any environments you have access to. Oftentimes, there'll be a sandbox or development environment and a production one. I'm in the right one, I'm gonna close this. And then we're gonna go over to the solutions area. It's often recommended to create a solution, which is basically a nice package of all the configurations that you will be doing. It makes it very easy then to export from one environment and import into another, and ensures that only the configurations that you are either creating, brand new, or editing are brought in. So for this demo, I'm going to create a new solution. And what I am aiming to do is add a pet table associated to contacts so that we can track people's pets and any characteristics related to them. So for 
for my solution name, I'm going to name it Pets. You should always put some sort of subject that allows some sort of context to what's included or what the solution is for. When selecting a publisher, you can select the default one. You also can create an organization one if you don't already have that as well. What's nice is, depending on the publisher, a different prefix can be assigned to any new configurations you do. So with the default ones, you'll often see new underscore, but I'm selecting CRMD for CRM Dynamics, which then allows the prefix CRMD to be assigned to any new configurations I do, such as tables and columns, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to create my solution. Wait a couple seconds for it to refresh and show up in my solution list, and I'll open it. From here, I have the option to add existing components or create new. So I'm going to do a little bit of both. First off, I'm going to add the contacts table. Go to table. It's going to list all the available tables or entities I have in the current system. I could scroll down to find it. You also can use a nice search box up here, which is very helpful when you're going through a long list. You can see here I have contact. I'll go next. For the time being, I have nothing specific I'm going to include for this contact table, but you could select specific components for this. I'm going to go add. And that's how you add existing. You can then go in to the table afterwards and add in subcomponents from there or create new. So now you can see in my breadcrumb trail, I'm in the contact table. I could add new fields or columns or add subcomponents, which are existing ones. So if I wanted to add some existing columns, maybe some existing views that I'll edit, that's how I would do that. I'm going to go back out to my main solution here and create a new table. Table. And this table is going to house pet information. So I'm going to name it pets. The system will auto assign the plural as well as the schema name. You can change that though if required. And then each table has a primary name column. Usually this actually is just called name, but you have at the setup time, so right now, the opportunity to change that. Because I'm going to have this field be the actual pet's name, I'm going to keep it as is. I'm also going to enable attachments for this table, meaning that I could have notes, including file attachments associated to each record within my pet table. Under more settings, you have a few other areas to check out. Description being just a description of the table you're creating. You can choose the table type. So standard table versus activity tables. Activity tables reference things such as email, phone call, task, those activities that are already included. You can create custom ones as well. Ownership, so this refers to whether a CRM user or a team can own a specific record in the table, or you can make it organization, which then means there is no specific owner for each record created. And a lot of this can depend on what kind of security setup and permission restrictions you might have. For this case, I'm not going to be implementing any major restrictions or security rules, so I'm going to choose organization. Under collaboration, you can enable further items here. And just notes, any with this symbol cannot be disabled after the fact. For example, enabling activities. So this would allow activities such as emails, tasks, phone calls, and any custom ones to be set regarding to any of the records in this table. That's how you enable that. However, I know that I'm not going to have any activities related to this one. They would technically be related to the contact. But let's say I had a need for it. I could enable it, just know that once it is, you cannot disable it.
create an update setting, by default duplicate detection is selected. However, note that you would still have to set up the duplicate detection rules in order for this to actually mean anything. I'm not concerned with duplicates. You can also enable quick create forms. So those are those nice little pop out forms that usually have pretty limited data, but allow a CRM user to quickly create a record versus opening the full form. You also have the option to enable change tracking. Offline, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's enabling uh, any offline access for this data in this table. I'm going to create my table. The system is just warning me of anything I've enabled that cannot be disabled later. So in this case, it's enable attachments. And I'm going to go OK. While it's provisioning my table, I can already continue creating new columns uh, for this. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to add column up here. And the first column I'm going to make is the type. So essentially, I want to know if this is a dog or a cat or a fish, perhaps. So I'm going to make um, the data type a choice. This used to be, or can still be referred to as a drop down, pick list, option set. So I'm choosing choice. And you'll see that while I've been creating this column, my table loaded in the back here. And these are just the out of the box um, system fields that come with any table creation. Okay, back to my choice. So for any choice fields, you have the option to uh, reuse a global option set or global choice. In this case, though, I have not created that in the system yet anyway, so I am going to create a new choice. Where there used to be local option sets and global option sets in the past, within the Power Apps and Power Platform, uh, it is automatically creating global option sets. And you'll see here it pulled in the exact same information and I can put my values down here. So I'll put dog, cat, whoops, I mentioned fish, and we'll add rabbit in there. You can always edit this later. Save. So this is creating the global option set. And then it's pushing me back into the specific table um, column. And you'll see here under choice, I'm now referencing that one I just created. And you could, again, edit the choices if you needed to. And you can choose if I have a default value. In this case, I'm going to have no default value because I want the user to actually fill that in. And you can set the requirement, so meaning the column has to be filled in or not before the record can actually be saved. In this case, I absolutely need it required that they pick the kind of type of pet it is before they could even create the record. You can fill in a description here. Just note that the information you put in this box is visible on the user interface. So when a CRM user hovers over the field on a form, it will display the information in here. So often this just gives a little extra guidance or suggestions um, or information about the field so that the user could have a little bit extra detail on why or what information to put in here. Under your advanced options, you can enable column security, uh, which then allows you to set uh, who can see the information in the field, who can edit it, who can create it. Enable auditing uh, is set by default. However, note that you still have to have auditing enabled on not only the environment, but the table as well. So I'm going to create my field now. You'll notice in my list of columns, I have a bold new field, and I have save table down here. I'm not going to do that just yet because I have a few more columns I want to create. So I'm going to go through that again, add column. This time I want to capture the color or perhaps colors. 
So instead of a choice field where they only have one option to select, I'm going to choose a choice says field, which is basically a multi-select. Again, I could link it to an existing global option set in the system, but in this case, this is brand new, so I'm going to create new. I'll add in a few standard colors in here. And save. Going back to the other properties for this column, setting whether it's required or not. In this case, I'm not going to make it absolutely required, but I'm going to just say it should be recommended to be filled in. Again, feel free to check your advanced options in case you need to enable or disable anything there. Okay, again, before I save my table, I have a few more columns I'm going to create. Another one will be the date of birth, so I'll put DOB. The data type for this one would be a date only. Again, I can set whether that's required or not or recommended. I'll put recommended because it's not necessary that everyone might know the pet's date of birth. I'm just going to quickly create that one. And lastly, I'm going to create a column that links to a contact in my system, basically to set who the owner of this pet is. So the data type for this one is going to be a lookup, which means I can link to an existing table in the system. You'll see here it says related table. I'm going to scroll down and select contact. And in this case, I am going to make this required because no one should be able to create the pet record without assigning it to a specific contact. From here, I can now save my table. And it's going to actually create those columns within my table. Usually only takes a little bit of time and it will refresh. Now that it's created my columns, I'm going to go and edit my form. So the top tab here, some standard forms. When I created this table, you have a main form, a card, and a quick view form. In this case, I just want to edit the main one. The main form that loads when someone opens up or tries to create a new pet record. Pretty standard layout so far, so I'm going to add some of those custom columns that I created. Over here on the left, a little ABC icon, that's my list of columns. And I can easily drag and drop or just click on them and it'll add it in a sequential order. So I'm going to drag and drop color. I want date of birth on there. I could also again just click owner click type and it adds it in underneath. Once I have my columns on my form here, I can still drag them around and change the layout. So let's say I have the name, I want the type, date of birth, color, and owner. You'll notice I can select the different sections as well as the tab and change any of the display information there if I wanted to give it a different label or even hide the label on some of these sections like they're hidden right now. From here, oops, I'm going to save my form. You do have the option to publish your form from here, which can be nice if you're just doing a few small edits to an existing form, but in this case, this is brand new, plus I have other configurations to do. So I'm actually going to go over and back into my solution.
from here, I also want to do a bit of editing on my views. In this case, or specifically, the active pets view, which is pretty standard for most tables when they're created. As you'll see here, it puts the name and they create it on. So we certainly want to change that up and add more detail. In this case, I don't need the created on information in my active view, so I'll remove that. I'm certainly going to keep the name. And then you'll see here, I have my list of fields. Right now, it's only showing me certain ones, and in this case, the custom ones I created. If you're ever unsure of why a column may not be showing up, there's a couple things you can try. One, you can say show only unused or unselect the show only unused table columns, but then you could end up just with duplicated information. The main part to check though is this filter. So it sets default, which for the most part is the standard out of the box fields and or your custom fields. I like to select all and notice how my list grew and it starts to include things like created by, created on, modified by, and so forth. For this, though, I'm going to have the name. Again, similar to the forms, you can drag and drop, which is nice. Or you can just start selecting them, and it'll add them to the end of the list. So I'll have the name, the type, the date of birth, color, owner. I can then adjust the widths of these columns just by clicking and dragging. Might want the owner column a little bit larger. Maybe the color, because there could be potential for multiple colors to be selected. And I think I'm good with this. I'm going to save my view. Similar to the forms, I do have the publish option from here, so I could publish this to the unify or sorry, to the user interface. But again, I might as well just publish all from my solution since I'm doing a bunch of different configurations. With any view, certainly be sure to double check how it's sorting and what the filter criteria is. This is good for me. It's sorting alphabetically by name and the filter is just on the status equals active. So I'm gonna leave that as is. Going back to my solution. Sometimes it might take a little while to load. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to go out of my pets table and follow my breadcrumb trail at the top here into the main solution part. For my pet solution, that is. And the last item that I want to edit is the Sales Hub app to make sure that I can access the pet table from within there. So I'm going to add existing. Go to the app. And in this case, it's a model-driven app. Go through my list, select Sales Hub, and then add that. On top of the app, I also want to include the site map, which is essentially like the navigation on the left. So I can do that by going Add Existing, scroll down to Other, and you'll see Site Map right here. Again, select the Sales Hub in this case, Add. For those familiar with editing model-driven apps, you know that you can get to the sitemap from within the App Designer, so I'm also going to show that. So I'm going to launch my Sales Hub App Designer, and the first thing that I'm going to do in here is edit my sitemap. So this is another way to get in to editing your sitemap or the sitemap designer, I should say. All I want to do is add the pet entity underneath contacts here. So I've selected that. I'm going to go add, in this case, a sub area. Over here on the right, I can select type, entity, or table. <laughs> and you can scroll through the whole list of your entities, but what's really nice is you can actually just type it, and it filters for you. It's okay to keep any of the system assigned IDs. If you do want to change the title, go for it. Uh, but for me, this is just fine. 
Now you see here I can save, save, and close. Grayed out right now because I haven't saved my changes is a published option. So just like the views and forms, you can publish directly from the sitemap designer. In this case, I'm just going to save and close. And it shoots me back into my app designer. Once you've added another entity to your app, I always suggest go to this entity view and scroll down to it. So we're going to find pets. It added it here because I added it to the sitemap. And just double check that you're including the forms, views, charts, dashboards, so forth that you want to include. In this case, pretty minimal anyway, but it's always good practice to check. So for my pet forms, I really don't have too many, so yes, I'm including the main form and the quick view, that's fine. For the views, let's say I don't want to include all the views in my Sales Hub app. I only want to include the Active Pet one. And then, you know, I can also include any of the advanced time, associated, oops, associated, or lookup views. But I'm not including inactive pet views in my Sales Hub app, so I've removed that. I haven't created any charts or dashboards, so you'll see here there's no records available, and that's fine. From here, I can save it. Notice that, again, I have a publish, so I could publish the app right from here, but instead I'm going to save and close. It's going to shoot me back into my solution, so I'm done editing that. And now that I've done the changes I've wanted to do, I'm going to actually publish all from the solution. So in the top ribbon here, publish all customizations. Any changes I did within this particular solution are going to be pushed out to the user interface. Once that is complete, you can then go into the Sales Hub app, do a little refresh, and we should see those changes. You could also just launch the Sales Hub app from the solutions, and we'll show you that as well. Since I've created quite a bit in terms of a new table, columns, um, and edited the app, sometimes publishing can take a little bit of time. So we'll just wait for the system to confirm. A great time for a coffee break, water break, stretch your legs, and there we go. It's published successfully. So because I have the Sales Hub app in here, I actually could hit the little ellipses or three dots here, and you could have the play option available to you. Because I have the app open, though, already in this tab, I'm just going to refresh my browser window. Might have to do it once or twice before the changes take effect, so I'll just do it a second time here. And I can see that it's loaded now properly because I have the pets table that I added to the sitemap. So I'm not going to wait for my dashboard to load. I'm actually just going to go right into my pets table. There won't be any data in there just yet but we can add some. Before we create new, I just want to show in my drop-down of views, see how I only have the active pets. That was the main view that I selected, and you cannot see the inactive pets view in this case. I'm going to go new so we can check out the form. And I'm going to create a new pet in here. We've got Buster, who in this case is a dog. Date of birth, you can type in or use the calendar here. 
Remember, I'm not required to fill in these uh, fields here, date of birth and color, but it is recommended with that sign. So for colors, you can select one or multiple. So in this case, let's say it was a black and white dog. I have that option. And then I select the owner from here, and this is going to pull for my contact list. So you'll see here I could either enter to browse my full list of contacts. I hit enter. You'll see I have quite a few sample contacts, or I can start typing. And you'll see it filters out based on the information I've started to put into that field. I'm just going to save and close in this case. It will shoot me back to what I was last in, which should be my pet view. We now see that row. You can see the columns that I added, name, type, date of birth, color, and owner. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to follow us. You'll see we're on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn.